Hello there! Welcome back to We Are Crafted In His Image. Today we are working on our third project for um, the Wisteria Wishes Cocoa and Crafts and it is this little treat box. I don't know if you can see in there there's a couple of Ghirardelli squares. Um, it can actually fit a third one or you can fit like a tea packet or something in there with the Ghirardelli chocolates. But yeah, I thought this was a fun little project. You can actually make this with um, the box itself with no adhesive. Um, I do put adhesive on mine just because it works a little easier for me. But yeah, kind of a fun little gift bag and I'm going to go ahead and show you how to make it. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're going to start out in your box package and I did give you enough to make two. I only, I'm only going to put together one. Um, it uses, oh wait, I, I do have two in here but I'm, I'm only going to put together one. Um, it uses a half sheet. So this is a full sheet of cardstock cut in half. So you can get two of these bags for every sheet of cardstock. Um, I have already pre-scored them for you and I actually even cut holes as well. But I'll show you, I'll have all the measurements on the blog. So if you want to recreate this later, you can do that pretty easily. There is, let's see, there's a white square here, a rectangle, and then in your, your bag, there is a teeny tiny little piece there. So don't lose those. And there's some tags and some twine. So I want to set all those aside. I don't need them just yet. We're going to start with our stamping. Um, this envelope that your stuff is in goes in next week's project. So put that over in project number four's envelope. <coughs> now, as I said, we've got this scored. Actually, let's do our stamping first. Let me move that aside. Let's get our stamping done. So. We are going to make a wisteria vine hanging down. We're going to need our garden green opened back up again. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. I'm trying to make sure I'm straight on here for you. And Highland Heather. And Gorgeous Grape. So, start out just like we've done with our wisteria vine before. You want to make sure that your hanging vines are hanging straight down. Decide how high up you want this to go. There we go. And then I'm going to clean. And of course I want a nice full vine. So I'm going to add a few more of the leaves without the hanging tendrils. I'm going to get that inked without getting those hanging tendrils there. And then I'm going to re-stamp right about here, I think. And then I'm going to come in with our little green vine, our little cluster of leaves. And I'm going to add a few more. Add one here. And maybe even add one coming down this way. <clears throat> I think that's good. Okay, so now let's get our Highland Heather, the cluster of three. Find those vines. I kind of hid one of them there. There we go. And then gorgeous grape for our details on the vines, or on the flowers. And there's that finished. I do try to get the purple ink cleaned off my stamps as quickly as possible because they will stain. It has a red base to it and it will stain. So you try to get those cleaned right away. It doesn't hurt the stamp, but if they get stained too much, it makes it hard to see through them. Um, <coughs> and now for the tag, I want to move this out of the way. You'll notice that your tag is this size. But if you've got the die set, this is the die that the tag came from. Um, the tag is actually a bit longer than this. Now I didn't want it that long because it would have been too big for the bag <coughs> and it didn't need to be any longer because the size of our sentiment is pretty, short, pretty small. So what I wanted to do is show you how I made my sandwich in order to cut it so that we got a smaller, a smaller one. Um, this is how the sandwich that you would normally put through your big shot. You've got one, two, three, you would have your paper down, your die would be on there, and then you would cover it completely with a third panel, okay, a third plate. Um, but what I did now <clears throat> is I figured out how, what size I needed it to be. 
one, two, three, four, five, six. And I kind of, because it has these stitch marks in here, you can kind of feel and it falls into the groove. It falls into those stitches. I need to go one more over. Whoop, come on, come on, one more. There we go. <laughs> there we go. So I can feel it's kind of, it's locked into those stitches. Now I could just put this plate on <coughs> and run it through again and it'll cut this piece off. The only problem with doing it that way is some of those stitches will then end up going further up right on this area of the tag and I didn't necessarily want that so an easy easy way to do it is simply take this plate and rather than putting it over the whole thing you only put it over the bottom half of it and when you run it through it's not going to cut any of this area it's only going to cut this part of it so then it'll end up cutting that off and you won't have extra stitch marks going up your tag so just an easy way to do that to make the tags the size that you want them and now I'm going to ink up with some gorgeous grape and put that on there there we go so now <coughs> let's go ahead and start assembling all of our stamping is done I want to close these up so I don't ink myself as you can see my hands have green on them from the last video yes I'm doing all four videos at once we have company coming next week and I want to get them all out of the way <coughs> so I can enjoy my grandkids so back to this piece here that has been scored basically that like, like I said it's eight and a half by five and a half and I scored it one and a quarter inches in on each side of the long sides and then three and three quarter inches in on each of these sides but again I'll have those measurements on the blog and now what you want to do is go ahead and fold and burnish really well okay I'm gonna go ahead and fold this one Make sure you line up this edge before you burnish so that it, it lines up straight. Okay, then fold the long ones. <clears throat> and actually, before I go any further, I need to go ahead and adhere that panel on the front because it's much easier. Well, actually, I can do it later because this thing folds flat. It, it, it stays flat when you're finished. So I don't have to put that on just yet. I will wait. <coughs> okay, now comes the part that's a little tricky, but it's really not. Um, you're going to fold this side in, and then I like to hold my finger right at that corner where this, this crease and this crease are. I like to hold my finger there. And then what you want to do is bring this crease up and get it to meet the side. And then you're going to press down and give that a curve. So I'm going to try I'm going to try to do it this way see if you if you've got better lighting, if you can see it a little better. So, you're going to pull this up and have it meet there. You see what I've done? And now we want to do the other two sides the same way. So basically, we're making a diagonal crease right in that spot it looks complicated but it's really not and there is our bag now the cool thing about these is they will lay flat even once it's put together they'll, they'll just lay flat and then when you go to use it <clears throat> you pop it up and you have a little pocket um, <coughs> now you don't have to do the adhering this next step you can leave it like this and put it together but I find that I prefer these pieces to be flat so I like to put a little bit of adhesive right along in here there we go and then you just fold it and see you just lift up and you have a pocket to put your chocolates in 
How cool! So now I'm going to fold it flat and I'm going to go ahead and put my panel on the front. Now one thing I did find is on this one here, I only put adhesive on the two sides and I'm noticing that my bottom is pulling up. So you do want to make sure you get some adhesive well across all the sides on this one. I always forget sometimes when it, it's a three-dimensional project, you really want to get um, all of the sides adhered well. Oh, come on. There we go. <clears throat> all right. And then you can decide which side you want, which one's going to be front or back. Um, <coughs> set that on here. Oh, come here. Oh, and I just realized that my hole that I made is now going to be covered by this white panel. So you're going to need to take either a hole punch or I'm just going to use a pokey tool and I'm going to poke through this to give me a hole for my twine. So if you don't have a small hole punch, just grab you a good pokey tool. I'm sure most of you have one in your crafting stash and poke that hole. Otherwise use a hole punch there, line that up and then punch through. And then in your kit, or I did give you, this is one of my favorite things, my favorite tools. Um, in your envelope you will find one of these little blue things. This is actually called a floss threader and you buy it in the dental section of the store. Um, it is meant for um, helping to get floss underneath your braces if you have to wear braces. I know this because my children all had to wear braces. Um, but this makes a wonderful tool for threading your thread, your twine through your bag. And actually I gotta finish putting my tag together before I put the twine in. But here, so <coughs> let me do that. On here, in your kit, there is a little tiny little purple thing, and I did put adhesive backing on it. So all you have to do is pull off the backing, and then line this up with the straight edge over your hole, and that's done. I made it easy for you. I didn't on my original one. I used, I used liquid glue, and that was kind of a pain, so I just went ahead and did that for you. So then we're going to go ahead and run this through here as you can see it's just a giant flexible needle or it's a needle with a giant hole in it <laughs> a giant eye stick your thread in there pull it through easy peasy oh you know what this is also going to come in handy grab yourself a clamp and clamp that together now I forgot to put my tag on I do need that on here and then come here <laughs> let's go through the back side There we go. Take my thread back through there. And ta-da, we're threaded. <clears throat> now you may want to put a little bit of adhesive on the back side of your tag. You can put a glue dot or just a little bit, but don't do on the end. You just want it up near the top there. Stick your tag down where you want it so it kind of stays on an angle and doesn't cover up all of your, your wisteria vine. And then we're going to go ahead and tie our string, <coughs> our bow. Now I'm going to show you how, this is a very long, I must have cut this a double size here, so way more than I'm going to need. Um, how I tie mine so that my bows go straight. So I'm looping this over, doing that little part of the knot like we normally do, right? So I don't know if you can see very well, actually I'm going to zoom in here for you. Whoops. Zoom in. Zoom in. Make sure you're focused. Okay, so this part here, you notice is coming down the bottom of this little part here. It's This one's coming off the top, this one's coming out the bottom. If yours is coming out the bottom, you can make your loop, then this one is going to go clockwise over the top and tie. And when you do it that way, you'll end up with your bows going the correct direction. Now, if it were going the other way, and I'll just show you, if it were going, da, 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 I can do this, because <laughs> I never do it the other way. But if it were going so that your right hand tie is coming across the top, see how this one is coming out the top instead of the bottom? 
make your loop, and this time, rather than going over the top, you're going to go over the bottom. So if it comes out the top, go around the bottom. If it comes out the bottom, go around the top. And let's see if this works as well. Ta-da! And they end up being nice and straight for you. Okay? So I'm going to retie this one <clears throat> so I can get it tight. I wasn't doing that very tight at all. So again, I'm coming out the top this time, so I'm going to go around the bottom. And pull, and then pull my strings, and yes, I gave myself way more than I need of this twine. <clears throat> oh, because I had enough to do two bags, because I have two bags in here, that's why. <laughs> and there you go, there's your finish. Now, I do want to show you, <laughs> this same stamp set can do lots of different flowers. We're going to actually do a different flower, a stand-up flower. Um, like blue bonnets in next week's class. Let me zoom this back out again so you can see me. Um, but you can also make Christmas trees out of it. Look at that. Isn't that so cool? Just turn it upside down. Just the flower clusters by themselves make beautiful little Christmas trees. So there you have a couple of different ways to use this stamp set. Um, <coughs> and next week we're going to do some fun watercolor and um yeah like i said make some stand up type like blue bonnet type flowers so until next time god's love and blessings to you bye <laughs>